Good morning, my creative friends, and welcome to another episode of Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette. I am Dr. Minette Riordan. I am the founder and CEO of Mindful Patterns. We are a company dedicated to supporting you to reconnect to your creativity, to experience a midlife renaissance that allows you to always feel like your most, most authentic self and make sure that you're living a life that is not just authentic, but that is aligned, that allows you to feel alive and that allows you to feel very value centered and live in a way that nurtures every aspect of your being. And from my perspective, that renaissance has to flow from within. We often this time of year start looking externally at all of the things that we want to create, the things that we want to do. And I invite you instead to consider who do you want to be? And how do you want to feel? And that's the journey we have been on all month long in December, doing a deep dive into 21 days of write, paint, and reflect using a variety of, good morning, Kim, using a variety of prompts from our beautiful collection of 118 prompts for creative self-reflection. This is the last week you can get our creative self-reflection kit. It's perfect for any time of the year. There are four beautiful printables, two of my favorite classes, including four Zentangle inspired sacred circle design over four hours of Zentangle lessons, as well as my super popular class color coded emotions, which is about understanding how we can use color to boost our mood. And this month I have had so much fun. I'm going to go ahead and change my camera here, creating a circle journal inspired by a class I took with Tiffany Sharp and Today, I'm going to put the finishing touches on this book and bind it all together. I've never worked in a journal before where I worked on the signatures and bound them together at the end. And I'm noticing, you know, some of them are different sizes. So it's going to be an adventure this morning. And as we're going along, putting this book together, looking at those finishing touches, I'd love to think about what's the journey that I've experienced over this past month. And I'm still trying to decide if I want, I think I do want these two bound together. What's the journey over the past month? And I'm just doing a really, really simple pamphlet stitch on these. It doesn't matter if you start from the inside or the outside, I've used my all to just punch two holes inside the length of my spine here for this signature. And I'm actually going to wrap the end of my thread around and go right back out through the same hole where I started. I think I need a longer tail to tie this off a little bit. So let me give this a little bit more of a tail there to make it easier to tie. And so I wrapped it around the edge. I'm back on the outside of the journal. I'm going to go back to the inside. I'm going to do that again where I'm going to wind it around the edge. This is just going to help with the the binding that I'm doing as well as the the strength of the book to make sure that all these little circle signatures stay together. And then I'm just going to tie this off in a double knot. And as I'm putting all this together, I want to consider What have I learned about myself in this journey, both creatively, but also from that sort of deep inner reflective place that's going to support me going forward into the new year. All right, we just have one more of these to do. So I'm going to take my all. Oops, I already did punch holes in there. I just couldn't see them. See that light shining through, smart me. I was so happy with this story that emerged from yesterday and the day before. I think this ended up being one of my favorite spreads in the whole book. And this is going to be the back cover and I haven't decided what to do on the back cover yet. Maybe I will figure that out today as well. But I also want to go 
page by page through the book today, looking at the lessons and looking for where do I want to add any details. So again, I have two, two holes in my little short binding here, going from the inside to the outside, wrapping it around the edge of the spine, back to the outside, then up through the inside, wrapping it around and back up into the center again. I'm just going to tie that in a nice square knot. And I want it to be pretty tight, but not so, so tight that I'm not going to be able to weave my binding together. I first learned this woven binding technique from my friend Andrea Shebelu. I think Allie Manning also has a, a version in her handmade book club. All right. So now I'm going to take a minute here. So I definitely think this is going to be the final spread. I've got my, all my signatures in order. I've decided that this signature is going to be the, the cover of the book. I really loved how this one came out. And I'm just going to take a minute to kind of flip through and look back. This was a fun page, but I almost feeling feel like it's missing some type of figurative image here. I loved our peace sign with the cardinal and a note here it says savor, savor, slow and steady wins the race. Learn to be patient and take my time. So be more like the, the turtle than the hare. This one also isn't finished and needs, I think, some Maybe I, I put the outline of a couple of pairs on here because I had a pear mask sitting around. So I think I might just come in with some white. And this was where the journey started and these words felt appropriate that this journey was about finding the real me as I looked back across the year. I've got a little pocket that's coming unstuck, so I'm gonna wanna do a little repair. So this is that point where we just kind of start to flip through and look at, admire our own handiwork and see what else we might wanna shift or change. As I looked at this page, it felt like it needs maybe a few more little pops of this red on here. And it also felt like it might be fun for some of these spreads to maybe have some little tabs on them that and the tab would have maybe a word or a prom, prompt to kind of remind me of what the different prompts were so I might add some tabs to some of these really loved this spread using Megan Quinlan's paper doll stencils so it was fun to kind of flip back through and look at the the different pages. This one was cut very differently than the others. I wasn't paying attention in that moment, so I have a much longer bit of spine here to figure out how to work in. This was all about sanctuary and creating safe space, so it also feels like a fun little tab of some kind on here for that page. I was looking at these little leafy bits thinking, do they need maybe a little pop of color on them? So just going through, this is the way, and normally this is where I personally get really lazy and uh, want to just be done with the project, right? And it's why I decided to take this final day to actually do some deeper reflection and really look at each of the signatures and say, are they finished? Are they complete? What else would I want to add to this? journey as we go along and most of it looks pretty good this definitely I want to sit and maybe add some zen tangle patterns to it I love kind of all these hidden little journaling spaces this one ended up looking really messy and maybe was my least favorite 
and it really captured the mood that I was going for here about the benefit or value of, of stoking imagination and how important it is for us to nurture creativity in ourselves. So it's going to stay because it was a meaningful page, even if it wasn't the prettiest page. And then we had our sweet lady with our tags. I really ended up loving that page and our page from yesterday. And then I'm going to want something to really finish off the back cover. And I don't know what that's going to be. I'm even thinking it might just be a solid, really nice piece of um, scrapbook paper because I have tons of scrapbook paper. And so the back cover to make it actually feel like a back cover of the, the whole book. And for Christmas, I wrapped all my packages this year in brown craft paper, which was really fun, and then used a variety of ribbon to bind them together, including this little bit of a sparkly twine. So I thought I would see if this sparkly twine would work for the binding, and if not, I've got a box of sari ribbon that I can use. So the way that this binding is going to work, and I'm sorry, that's going to be a little bit blurry, is I'm going to go underneath. This is going to be like a woven binding. So I'm going to go underneath one signature. You can see if that's too tight, it's going to be hard to pull in there. And I'm going to go through the entire book. Okay, that one's a little tight. And I'm going to pull that thread all the way through. And this is how we're going to bind our signatures together. And I think this sparkly thread is going to be really pretty. So this one, if I want this one to fit, I'm going to need to make sure that it stays aligned in the center here. Again, it's a little tricky because they didn't all come out exactly the same size and shape, but I'm not a perfectionist, so we're going to make it work. And things, making sure things are in order. They are. So this is an experiment. I don't necessarily know what I'm doing, but I'm going to figure out how to make it work here. And then when I get over here to the other side, so you can see I have one signature that's much fatter than all the other signatures, and that's fine. I'm going to wrap that thread around and underneath the end here. So it's nice and tight on this end. And then I'm just going to go back through all of these one more time. We'll start to squish those together as we go along. So I'm going to wrap it around the end. And I think this one I'm going to go over, under, over, it's under, over, under. And we'll start to get a little more of a woven look as we're going here. And I'm working with a short piece of thread because again, this was tied on a Christmas package. And it's actually easier when you're doing this kind of binding to work on, work with a shorter piece of thread so that you're not having to pull so much through. And this is going to be a little bit fussy and take a couple of minutes to make sure we get it on there properly. And I sort of vaguely remember what I did before, so I'm also kind of just making this up as I go along. All right, so now that we have it on there, it's going to be easier to do some of the over, under, over, under. And there's not a lot of space, right? It's a it's a short spine, so it's not going to take me very long to finish this up. 
and I can see where up here it's a little messy because of some of the, the different lengths of the spines. And I think I'll be able to just go back with some extra thread and see if we can make those a little bit pretty. Okay, I'm trying to get under the thread and not split the thread down the middle. It's very easy to, to split that waxed thread in some of those places where it's really tight. Okay, so now we're starting to get more of that woven look. I really love just that tiny little bit of sparkle in this pretty twine. Always making sure to wrap it around the end and make sure we're getting it well connected in there. And that one long one is a little tricky. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking it would have been good to have some kind of big fat clip, I think, to attach this to, to hold them all together. It would have been easier on my hands. Okay, so that's under, over, under, over. We'll wrap that around so that's under, over, make sure I don't miss any in there, over, under. It's probably not that exciting watching this part of it, but I'm going to be excited to see it all bound together. So what did I do there that it got, so something about where the thread is there got a little bit. All right, can we go one more time? So some of these are again longer than others, so we're just going to do our best to get this all put together. As usual, you guys are watching me experiment and play and figure it out as I go along. I want to capture the end of this big fat one here so we make sure we get it well bound in there. And what I love about this one is that I can attach other flowy bits to this as well, right? I can leave bits hanging. I can snip this off if I don't want little dangly bits on them. And I'm going to see if I can get one more in here to just get this last piece in here well attached. And I can see where I could have left my binding stitches, just those little pamphlet stitches, probably a little bit looser. And here where I have this longer signature, I think I'm just going to have it stop right there in the center and we'll have a nice little tail there. All right, and we're going to hope this is all going to work and stick together. We're about to find out. I love the way the, the twine looks. And I'm probably going to maybe tuck this piece in a little bit. We'll see if that was a mistake to cut that one off that short. 
and I can come back where I've got some loosey-goosey threads and we're just gonna see if we can tighten some of those up. You don't want your woven binding to be too tight because then your book won't open. All right, because that was such a short space, it was actually ended up being a little bit easier than I thought it would be. I also have this nice little longer piece, so I am thinking it would be fun. I love books that have lots of charms and things hanging off of the edges of them. So I might see what other ribbon, all my charms are on the other side, so that might be a little bit later. So I'm gonna see if I can just push this last piece through so it's not hanging out quite so much but it's also not cut off too short okay a little bit of that shortness is fine all right oh my gosh 21 days of juicy creative fun here um, finally all bound together into this journal that I am super super happy with And this I can see where I might need or want to tighten things up. This one needs to get finished up. Well, I'm going to sneeze. Pardon me. Okay, so we have this little piece of this tag here or this uh, pocket here that has come loose and I really want to make sure that stays nice and stuck so I think I'm going to put a little bit of my double stick tape on here. Thank you Kim, I thought so too. Thank you for the bless you also. It's dusty down here some in the basement, so when the heater comes on, sometimes it stirs up the dust. All right, we'll get that pocket stuck down in there. I love this little tag, but oftentimes when we when we really take our time and sort of pause and look at things, good morning, Anne. Welcome, welcome. When I look at this, I'm like, oh, it needs just some little pops of white on it. So Anne, we just finished binding the, the book together and now I'm going to go through the, the pages and see where do I want to put some just little finishing touches on things and this felt like it just needed a little bit of white to brighten it up. doesn't have to be a lot of anything. It's amazing how just those little bits of contrast can really make a difference. I loved the bird. I had lots of birds and butterflies in here. So this was the one that felt like it needed a little bit of touch up and a little more color on the page, a little more of that red. And it also felt like it would be fun to have a little bit of a tab on here as well. All right, washi tape, get that washi tape stuck down. So I think I can take just a little bit of our alizarin crimson and do a tiny little bit of mark making on the page. Again, this is finishing touches on our 21 day journey. And then I just had a whole bunch of different tags and things. I'm looking at what do I have sitting right here that I can use to make some tabs for the pages. I'm going to put these book binding tools away. All right, I had two needles sitting here. There's the other one because otherwise I will lose those needles and they will go I don't know how great the video was on putting it together, but here was the, the woven binding of weaving all of the, the stitches together. And again, I think um, it needs some more little happy dangly bits on there, but we'll see where we get to. 
Okay, so this one just needs that little touch more red. And I've got a nice little rubber tip tool here. I love these little rubber tip tools. They're great for mark making. And I've got polka dots here, so I'm just going to repeat that pattern in a couple of other places on the page to feel like that red is just a little more integrated because it felt too much like it was dominating the, the page. Notice how dark though that red looks over the, the top of the blue there and how much better it shows over the white when we think about layering colors. We got to think about that. And I'm also thinking that maybe I want that red to flow all the way over here across the page to help kind of marry these two pages together a little bit. And just as a recap, this was a book where I primarily focused on using only three colors plus black and white. I used a Naples yellow hue, a turquoise blue, and I used an alizarin crimson, which was uh, quite a transparent red, which was interesting. And remember on any tube of paint that you buy that's a better quality tube of paint or actually even inexpensive ones do this often. They tell you the transparency. So this one has partial transparency. This one is very opaque, which is great for a yellow. This one also has a lot of opacity. So noticing when you're selecting colors, you want a nice combination of transparent versus opaque colors. All right, so I'm going to get this dry before I turn the page. And I'm looking at this thinking it would like to have just a fun little tab on the page. And for some of these, I feel like I want to go back and maybe even add the, the prompt to the page. So I just have some scraps of mixed media paper. I always have scraps of mixed media paper sitting around. And that was actually two scraps of mixed media paper. And I'm going to fold this in half. And it just feels like it needs that little, what's on the other page here? And we got her head, so this is going to have to go on the page over here. It's going to help me see how big I want the tab to be so that I'm not losing anything. Sorry, you guys can't see that because my picture was in the way. Okay, so we're going to get a little tiny tab on here. And again, it's going to have a word. So this was a spread that was all about the key to productivity, like when is my most productive time. And this was about connection, what makes me feel connected to others. I ended up really, really loving this, this page. And so I'm going to get some color down on our little tag here. Thank you, Anne. Yeah, I was super, super happy with those. Those are Megan Quinlan's P 
paper doll stencils and they are just so sweet. Okay, so I'm going to get this dry. And then I also want to come in and make it like tab shaped a little bit. So I'm just going to round the corners. I wish I had my corner rounder here. I would make nice even corners, but we're going to do just a little hand cut tab here. And it's going to say finding the key. And I think I'm going to use this little scrappy bit of double stick tape here. Maybe. And I'm probably going to figure out a way to also integrate the tag over here, like maybe add a little bit of pink. But I love having just these little bits and pieces, right, that give it those finishing touches, help me remind me what the pages were about. Good morning, Jen. Good afternoon. Where in the world are you joining us from that it's afternoon at your time? Come say hi. Yeah, big boy. All right, so I'm flipping through the now bound book, seeing how my signatures are holding together, seeing if there's places like this that are where things haven't stuck together and they need to get put back together again. Little extra pressure and glue stick in there. This one felt like I wanted a little bit more color on those leaves. They don't need to be completely colored, but I do think I want a little bit of color. So these were some holly leaves from a die cut. And this page was the page that was about, do you think that you're introverted or extroverted or somewhere in between? Or maybe it was the prompt about loneliness and when we feel lonely. I know we had both of those prompts. And so definitely feeling like I want to go back through the list of prompts that I used and kind of decide, do I want to add some words, a little bit more writing so that I do remember. I ended up loving the back of this tag as much as I loved the front of the tag. And we can also look at places like this where I don't necessarily want to see the tape. Good morning, Sylvia. And so all I have to do is come in and add a little bit of color so I can marry that tape with the rest of the page. 
and get that tape to just disappear just a little bit. And the reason I do that is it just makes the page feel more finished. And that's kind of the focus for today is how can I make the page feel complete or not the page, well, each page, but also the book overall, like taking the time to put those finishing touches in. And in the past, I would have done my all of my prompts and then just felt complete with the project and have been ready to move on to the next project. And I wanted to honor this project a little bit more by taking my time to go through it, to really be mindful of the experience of what I learned, to really look at the pages, make sure all the colors really fit. I love these words. I am calm, flexible, and responsive to other people. There is no need to rush. Things usually work out exactly as they're supposed to. But already that feels better. That tape has kind of disappeared into the back background. Kim, do you mean will I uh, just personally kind of flip through it to have a, a look at the different pages? I'm not always great about going back through my journals and then sometimes I'll go through my boxes of journals and I will pause to look at them. And as you're saying that, I think what feels important right now is to type up a list of the specific prompts that I used and to um, attach the prompts in into the book so that I have the, the prompts in the book. This one feels like it could use a little bit more mark making on the page and uh, that if I then I would remember I think a little bit better. We were extra glary this morning. Let's see if I can turn those lights down a little bit. Those magazine pages end up being so glary. But I think that's a it's a great question, Kim. Will I go back through this? And you know, when we're doing this kind of deep reflective work like this, I think it there is value in taking our our time to really honor and treasure it. And one way to do that is definitely to, to flip back through. So great idea. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then I finally decided so on New Year's Day from 7 a.m. to maybe 9 a.m., a, a couple of hours at least. I'm, I'm going to stick around until I finish the project. I want to work with a mantra of the year. A mantra can be just a word, but for me, they're usually a phrase that holds the energy of how I want to feel going into the year. For me, it's a little more sacred than just picking a word of the year. I want to create something really beautiful to honor that similar to what Kim is talking about with this journal. And so I decided what would be fun that I would want to keep around and be able to look at over and over again and uh, what's a project, a fun project that I've been wanting to try. And I'm going to work on a sample today, so I will post um, a video of a sample at some point. But I want to create a scroll book, so we're going to create kind of a, a rolled scroll type journal, almost like a little illuminated manuscript style to honor our intentions for the year and to illustrate the mantra that we want to guide and help us stay present to what we say we want. It's so easy to get so excited at the beginning of the year and to feel enthusiastic about all the things that we want to accomplish. 
And then, you know, within a couple of weeks, we've fallen back into old habits and patterns. And so I want to create something that is going to be a visual reminder throughout the year to always come back to this idea of how do I want to feel and what's going to inspire action? What's going to inspire action? So again, that will be on New Year's Day at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. I will be creating a rolled scroll book from start to finish and talking about how to create a mantra. got those dots on there pretty thick and they're not wanting to get dry very quickly. So I feel like this one, we got some nice color on there, but it could use just a little bit of contrast. So remember we can do that by just adding a little black, a little white, so that everything doesn't end up having a sort of monochromatic feel to it. keeping that very loose and scribbly. This is one of my favorite pens. This is an Inkjoy, Papermate Inkjoy pen. They're probably my favorite pen for journaling, but they're also uh, great for going over the top of acrylics. Awesome, Kim. Thank you, thank you. It'll, it'll be a fun project and we'll get it done. Uh, and then I still have lots of time for everyone to go off and play or relax for our first holiday of the year. It's fun to start the new year with a holiday. Okay, so this feels like sparkly, attention, super playful, like it was just what this page needed to kind of pull it all together. And now all of a sudden it feels like there's magic and energy happening on the page and the curiosity of our little bird here. Much better. And it's these final touches that remind me to sit with the words, the images, the affirmations. So I like having this kind of blank page in here and this is actually as I'm looking at this I have this fun little envelope I created. This is a, a tea bag out of those tea bags that my mom gave me and I'm thinking that this is a great place to create a list of the prompts and tuck them into this little pocket and that will help this page to feel finished and it would be fun to take this over to my sewing machine and stitch this pocket in with my sewing machine so I will do that later add that packet this one also felt like it needed a little bit more drawing Just maybe a little more pattern and definition. Again, none of this is, you know, I'm not spending a lot of time. And it also feels like it needs a word in the center. This is also a hand painted tea bag. I had so much fun with all the tea bags that my mom gave me. I'm definitely probably going to incorporate some of those into the project for New Year's Day.
these all feel maybe a little too big. This one is the right color. Let's see. And I will be showing how to create a scroll book start to finish. They're simple to create. They're a lot of fun to create. And I will be posting a project video and supply list either today or tomorrow to help prepare. And I also wrote a blog post on my website yesterday about what is a mantra and how do you create one. In fact, I will go back when I'm done and I will post the link to that video, or I mean to that blog post in the description. Love the way these pages turned out. And I'm gonna do that same thing here, get a little bit of paint down on this tag to finish it up. So some of you that have been joining me for this project off and on throughout the month or all month long, I'd love to hear what are some of your own personal reflections as you think back over this past month. What are some of the, the thoughts or learnings or ideas that you're taking away with you from our journey together? I think for me, I'm feeling inspired and grateful. Um, like just celebrating that I took the time to do this kind of deep re reflection before the end of the year and realizing how much I really loved working in this little circle format as well. And I feel like it just makes a huge difference on the page to incorporate that tape into the page. All right. You know, as I reflect back over some of the pages that have felt the most impactful, you know, and I think about in particular the one with the paper dolls and connection. And I think there were two things that really stood out for me in th this journey. It was just that reminder of how important connection is to me and how as I design my life for the next year, I want to prioritize that. And for me, connection always has three distinct parts, connection to self, connection with others, and connection to something greater than myself, whether that's God, spirit, universe, whatever that is for you. So I, when I think about connection, I think about making sure that I'm meeting my needs for connection at all three of those levels. All right, this one definitely felt like it wanted some more patterns added to it. And that's going to take a little bit longer, so I may do that one off camera. I can hear my cat on the other side of the room shredding paper. I had to get a, a plastic bag. I'd left a plastic bag full of the tea bags on the table, and she just shredded the plastic bag. I don't know what it is that she has a fondness for shredding paper. Yeah, I, that was the second one. So connection was one and then the getting out of my comfort zone was the second one for me too, Kim, that I wanted to bring up. 
All right. So this feels pretty good. It feels like, again, you know, that we need just uh, some white around the edges to sort of, it will help pull out some of the pattern. And I'll be right back because my stupid cat is licking the coffee off the coffee dyed tea bags, which could not be good, should not be good for the cat. So I'll be right back. You would not think cats would like the taste of coffee, but the last couple of times I've dyed things with coffee or left a coffee cup sitting around, I've had to rescue it from the cats. I know, Anne, it's hilarious, right? Um, dogs destroying homework, but I never heard of a cat, but Georgia would totally destroy homework because man, does she love, I can't leave a roll of paper towels sitting out anywhere on my art table because she will shred the paper towels. She loves bubble wrap. And Diego's the one who loves the coffee. Like if I spill some on the floor walking down the stairs, he's right behind me licking it up. Yeah, it's amazing how just that little touch of white makes such a big difference. Now she's over there knocking all my paintbrushes off the table. She's definitely one of those cats. Anything that I leave lying on the table eventually ends up on the floor. I find glue sticks everywhere around the edges of the studio. So one of the reasons to add more detail and decoration to a page like this is one to make that magazine image feel more incorporated into the journal and also just to make it a little bit more my own while still honoring and celebrating the work of the original artist. I love this where I can see all the different layers and pieces of things. I think these tags felt pretty finished. These were tags to explore how I want to feel. I am always in my PJs early in the morning, and so I, I roll right out of bed and right into the studio. That was the inspiration for the, the series. Um, and I'm wondering if these might want a little word on them. So I don't need to consider this journal finished. I think I'll let it sit out for a little while and uh, take my time to decide what I want it to be. And again, I think this page, I'm gonna just pick out a piece of uh, scrapbook paper that coordinates with the, the colors of the book and go from there. So it still feels like for me, I want maybe some pretty little beads or charms hanging off of it. Happy with how the, the binding came out and it's um, actually holding the book together. So that feels good. Definitely feel like it would be fun still to, let's see. So I have a, a huge, box of, you know, bits of sari ribbon and twine and stretchy cord. That's a pretty green ribbon. It feels like it just needs a little more something something on the spine. This is mostly sari ribbon. Actually, it's a great time of year to uh, maybe pop in to Michael's or Joann's and see what kind of ribbon they have on sale. This still has the, the plastic on it. It's never even been opened.
And I also want to think about a closure for it as well. And I had a button, just a fun, clear little button sitting here. That maybe that button, oh, that would be fun. It could get stitched right into the center of the flower. And I think this one was about growth doesn't happen in the comfort zone. But if we stitch that flower in, then I can create a really simple binding around that button, but then the button doesn't interfere with the page. And I have a beautiful box of my grandmother's buttons that my mom gave me. And so maybe this pretty green is going to be just get wrapped around because I really love wrapped journals like this. I was thinking I was going to have something else maybe hanging off of the the spine a little bit, but it's not going to be that. Got to try things on. And I'm laughing. I thought, oh, it'll be quick to put the finishing touches on this and get it all bound together. And I'm having fun with kind of the fussy parts. I keep looking at this sequin paste also, or uh, waste, and thinking it's got a lot of paint on it. It would make a fun addition to a page for texture all by itself. All right, but it's time to let this rest for a little while to go through it one more time and look at where do I want to add some little bits and pieces what kind of closure do I want to put on it but at least it's all bound together it's not falling apart here's another piece of tape that can get painted this one is a little loosey-goosey so I may see if I can tighten that one up. So I still have a couple of pages to work on and I actually like having a couple of things that aren't finished because it feels like an invitation to come back to work in the journal by not having it all completely finished. Our watercolor play day, self-compassion, trust, and grace. Definitely feeling the need to get the prompts in here. I love this picture of Jane Goodall. Love that we can see the joy and attention. Yeah, I think it's important to never look at a project as just completely finished, right? But at if it feels like an invitation, then I'm more likely to come back and reflect and look and think. Not sure I'm liking the abundant there, but we'll think about it. Again, anything can change, right? Everything is paint overable. I don't know. This one is so messy. It's really bugging me. So we'll see. That's one that I might come back to and paint out a lot of it, especially next to this page because I liked this lady so much with her little tags. So 21 days of write, paint, reflect almost complete. It feels really good to have completed this project and uh, I definitely feel pretty proud of the work that I did. I hope you feel proud of the work that you did as well. Have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you on New Year's Day with our 2024 scroll book and mantra. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Um, and I come on usually about three days a week in December. I came on a lot more frequently. And, um, but generally I do one evening and two mornings. I'm always here Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. And uh, I'll be looking at my schedule here in the next couple of days and I will be publishing the schedule. But generally Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. I'm here. 
Have a beautiful rest of your day, everyone, and I will see you live on Monday at 7.30.